statements, I recognize the member for Mississauga Moulton. Speaker, Toronto Pearson Airport holds a special place in my heart. It was the place where I first set foot on Canadian soil, marking the beginning of my dream life on January 15, 2000. Situated in Mississauga Moulton, Pearson Airport is the front door to Canada for millions of visitors and newcomers to Ontario every year. Premier Ford always says Ontario is economic powerhouse and Pearson Airport stands as a testament to this by contributing over $42 billion annually to Ontario's GDP and employing over 50,000 workers. With the increasing demand for air travel, the Pearson Lift Project is preparing to elevate Pearson as one of the most advanced, sustainable and passenger-friendly airports in the world. This initiative will modernize facilities while creating world-class amenities and commercial spaces. Thanks to the excellent leadership of CEO Deborah Flynn, Pearson Lift will strengthen vital infrastructure and reaffirm Pearson's commitment to supporting a sustainable and prosperous future for Ontario. Pearson remains a transportation cornerstone for an integral part of Ontario's supply chain for the critical goods residents and businesses rely on every day. My best wishes for Toronto's Pearson's evolution as it reflects our national values and aspirations. I look forward to seeing the shovels in the ground for stronger and prosperous Ontario. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member statements. I recognize the member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, as everyone knows, insurance rates are going up. People are getting sick at work from heat stroke. People are being forced from their homes by out-of-control forest fires. These damages from climate change are already here. It is not a distant issue, but one people are being hit with today. We need to help people make their homes better able to withstand extreme weather. We need to ensure that the measures to protect people from climate-driven floods are not abandoned, as is being done with attacks on conservation authorities, that in fact we need to put in more flood protections. Making homes and communities safer from fire saves lives and avoids huge personal and financial costs. Failure to act, in fact, action that makes things worse, means people will lose their homes and that all of us will pay higher insurance premiums. The government's refusal to carry out a credible climate plan or to put in place measures to protect us from existing climate damage is hurting people in Ontario. The government must act now on climate. Thank you. For the member's statements, I recognize the member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Um, yeah. Madam Speaker, it is my privilege to share that on May the 10th, I joined Min the Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce, to announce an investment of $33.4 million for a new school in Etobicoke Lakeshore. Yeah. This new public school investment will create another 823 student spaces and 88 licensed childcare spaces for families in South Etobicoke. I'm happy to note that the new Etobicoke City Centre Elementary School is the fifth major school investment for Etobicoke Lakeshore during my tenure as MPP. That's over $135 million invested in schools and linked child spaces in our community. I'm a proud advocate for the, to deliver these must-needed investments for our fast-growing community to support working families and young learners. Two out of these five schools, St. Leo's and Holy Angels, are expected to open in September 2024. The new Holy Angel School will accommodate 600 students and have 88 childcare spaces. There'll be room for 500 students at St. Leo's, along with 49 childcare spaces. The new improved Bishop Allen Academy and St. Elizabeth School are anticipated to open September 2027 with 1,300 and 600 pupil spaces, respectively. I also want to share that the upcoming 2025 school year, the Toronto Catholic District School Board will get nearly $1.2 billion in education funding, which is an increase over $15. $6 million from the current school year, and the Toronto District School Board will get an additional $3.3 billion, an increase of $68 million from the current school year. For the member statements, I recognize the member for Hamilton Nelson. Thank you, Speaker. Hamilton is facing the worst homelessness and housing crisis yet. 1,900 are homeless. 
258 are visibly homeless, sheltering in encampments. Close to 8,000 Hamiltonians are on a wait list for housing eight to ten years long. 16,000 affordable units have been lost in the last 10 years, lost units with rents of 750 or less. For every one unit of affordable housing created, Hamilton loses four to the private rental market. Life expectancy is half when you are homeless. None of this is okay. On Saturday, I joined the End Homelessness March in Hamilton. I met Dorothy, a 72-year-old sheltering in a nearby encampment since November. She was evicted from her home by a rent eviction. Dorothy was there with so many others, calling for change. I met Angela, affectionately known as Jordan's mom, a pillar in the community who continues to stand up and speak out. Angela spoke passionately and challenged all of us in attendance to come together, to support, to help, to make a difference. It was an emotional gathering that wrapped up with a communal meal, distribution of clothing and blankets, and a collective sense that now is not the time to give up. Political will got us here, and only political will will get us out. Together, we must end this crisis, and in the words of those marching on Saturday, we are unstoppable. Another world is possible. Member statements. I recognize the member for Ajax. Thank you, Speaker. Always happy to stand and rep Ajax. Over the weekend, I had the privilege of joining Sash Bear Foundation at their annual walk in Toronto, which saw the incredible support of over 700 participants. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Lynn and her husband, Mike, the founders of Sash Bear Foundation, who are here today along with Marlene, Melanie, and, and I think Paul. Their initiatives stem from the tragic loss of their daughter, Sasha, to suicide and they have since dedicated themselves to promoted mental health education, awareness, and suicide prevention strategies. In a world where mental health stigma still persists, organizations like Sash Bear serves, serve as a place of hope and understanding. Their commitment to breaking down barriers surrounding mental health conversations is not only admirable, but also vital for our community's well-being. They focus on educating parents and caregivers on how to effectively support children facing mental health challenge. Sash Bear's remarkable efforts include empowering families and communities through life-transforming skill workshops and evidence-based programs. All of these services are provided for free. Their work has touched countless lives, and I want to express my gratitude to Lynn, Mike, and their incredible team for the dedication and impact that they have had. Thank you. Member Statements. I recognize the member for Tamiskaming Cochran. Thank you, Speaker. I was wondering this morning what I was going to do my member statement on, and then I got a text that, that made my decision. My wife texted me and wished me happy anniversary. <laughs> so so I, I, tried, I tried to save myself and I called her back and, you know, happy anniversary. And someone asked me how long we've been married and I had her on the phone, so I had to ask her that too. <laughs> so so we, we've been married. 38 years. Um, <laughs> um, we, we met. Um, she came to our farm uh, with my cousin uh, from Holland for a day, and then she came back on a year for an exchange program, and then she went back home, and amazingly enough, she actually came back again. <laughs> and. Uh, so she keeps me grounded. Uh, just a little story, when I first got the job as whip, I came back and explained to her what a whip does and all she did, like that we're supposed to organize things, she just laughed. <laughs> when I came back one time and said, I'm the, I'm the finance critic, she goes, but, but you don't even do the books. <laughs> anyway, I love her dearly. She is my rock and uh, happy anniversary. <laughs> Nicely done, and I'm sure the flowers will be delivered later today. Yes. <laughs> Further member statements, I recognize the member for Oakville. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Madam Speaker, and uh, happy anniversary. Speaker, in seven days, Canada will mark the 80th anniversary of D-Day, the largest combined military operation in history. On June 6, 1944, D-Day, 14,000 brave Canadians stormed Juneau Beach in Normandy. They launched a campaign that helped turn the tide of World War II. This day is etched in history as a testament to courage, sacrifice, and the unyielding spirit of soldiers. We must remember the bravery demonstrated by our Canadian heroes who landed in Normandy on that day, defending freedom, our rights, and democracy. To honour those who fell 80 years ago, I will be attending the annual D-Day Parade in Oakville, hosted by the Royal Canadian Legion, Chris Vokes, Branch 486. Veteran members, Legion members, dignitaries and cadets will assembly, assemble at the Legion Hall and march to the Cenotaph. This cenotaph, located in the centre of Bronte in a village by the park, by the lake, honours those who served in World Wars I, II and Korea. The park is dedicated to Major General Christopher Vokes, an Oakville resident and distinguished veteran. It stands as a reminder of the bravery and sacrifices made by our fellow Canadians. As the 80th anniversary approaches, we are also mindful of the conflict happening today, including the wars in the Middle East as well as the Ukraine. We are reminded that our freedom should never be taken for granted. Speaker, I hope and I encourage all of us here in the House and all Ontarians to take some time to remember over the next seven days those who fell on D-Day. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. I recognize the member for Haldeman Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. Today I stand to boast about an exciting business on the western edge of Norfolk County called Gopher Dunes. Many locals driving by on Highway 59 might view this as a dirt track where dirt bike enthusiasts just go to rip it up once in a while. Truth be told, Gopher Dunes is a premier racetrack that broke ground in 1986 with Frank and Barb Schuster, the masterminds behind bringing world-class racing talent and entertainment to their property. I've known the Schuster family since I was very young, quiet, behind-the-scenes folk who have always given back to their community. Today, Barb and Frank's son, Derek, has his hand on the throttle as owner and president. The main feature of Gopher Dunes is the world-famous two-kilometer sand track. The course features man-made obstacles with a 40-rider starting gate. Racers who have traveled the globe maintain Gopher Dunes is one of the most difficult sand tracks in the entire world. After a long day of riding, most riders quip, just happy to have survived. Over the years, the property has grown to include a beginner, novice, and peewee track. Tired of watching action on the track? No problem. There's fishing, swimming, trail riding, and camping right on site. As someone who has grown up frequenting Gopher Dunes, I assure you the family atmosphere is one to behold. A few weeks ago, I took part in the kickoff of the Honda Canada GDR Fox racing season. A stellar team racing out of Portland includes one of Canada's top racers, Dylan Wright, seasoned veteran Tyler McDaglia, and from down under Australia, the youngest member of the team, Tiger Wood, who joins as an amateur. Good luck. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member for Mississauga Centre. Good morning, Madam Speaker. As May is coming to an end, I want to take a moment to acknowledge and celebrate Polish Heritage Month in Ontario. The month of May commemorates the 1791 Constitution, symbolizing Poland's enduring aspirations for freedom, democracy, and independence. It also highlights the significant impact Polish Canadians have had on Ontario's history, culture, and democratic values. Polish Heritage Month provides a valuable opportunity to educate all Ontarians about the challenges Polish Canadians have had to overcome, escaping oppression, the Iron Curtain, and eventually settling here in Canada. This past Tuesday, I have had the pleasure of co-hosting a Polish Heritage Month celebration alongside my wonderful colleagues, Minister Surma and MPP Christine Hogarth. I'm also proud to sit uh, in the chamber next to a fifth-generation Polish-Canadian, MPP Jakabaski. <laughs> Speaker, I'm proud to be part of a government that champions the many diverse cultures within our province. Our government's commitment to the strength and diversity of Ontario was particularly evident on Tuesday evening. The celebration showcased the traditions, talents, and contributions that make our community vibrant and inclusive. 
We will continue to support and promote cultural diversity, ensuring that all voices are heard and appreciated in our collective journey towards a stronger, more unified Ontario. Jeszcze Polska nie zginęła. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member for Milton. Thank you, Speaker. I'm delighted to invite the House and everyone listening to downtown Milton's Summerfest this Saturday. Just to give you an idea, the small stretch of Main Street that hosts this festival was built for a town of three to 5,000 people, and yet every year we welcome 35,000 attendees at this festival. Thank you. In addition to food, drinks, vendors, and everything else, we also have eight different concerts, not at the same time. So I would love to see my colleagues and everyone listening out there come out to Milton and enjoy some of the hospitality my community has to offer. Thank you. It is now time for introduction of point of order. I recognize the member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it, as members will see on their desk is uh, a notice that today is Peterborough Day at Queen's Park. We'll have a uh, reception in rooms 228 and 230, and I am seeking unanimous consent to wear my Peterborough Peach jersey for Peterborough Day, as well as my Trent University Converse running shoes for Peterborough Day. From Peterborough, Kawartha is seeking unanimous consent to wear Peterborough garb. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I recognize the Minister of Children and Community and Social Services. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Speaker, after 34 remarkable years of public service, Assistant Deputy Minister Karen Glass at the Minister of Children and Community and Social Services will be retiring tomorrow. Karen, oh. on behalf of the people, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you for everything that you've done for the province of Ontario, and enjoy your retirement. 